the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. A very warm welcome to our celebration of Mass on this second Sunday of Easter, also known as Low Sunday, and also known as uh, Sunday of Divine Mercy. So uh, depending on what your emphasis is, we have various different names for this particular Sunday as we begin the season of Easter, or move further into the season of Easter, but end the Easter octave. Just before we begin our Mass today, uh, many of you may have heard of the death of Cardinal Edward Cassidy, uh, who died yesterday in Newcastle, New South Wales. Uh, Cardinal Cassidy is very important to this parish for a number of reasons, two reasons in particular. Uh, he, was, he died at the age of 96, so he lived a good long life. Uh, but he actually went to school in this area, went to Parramatta High School, not the Catholic school, but Parramatta High School, back in the 1930s and 40s, I think. I uh, was ordained in 1949. He's probably not so well known to many Australians because uh, though an Australian cardinal, he spent most of his life in the diplomatic service, uh, serving in various parts of the world. Uh, but he always called Australia home and, of course, came here uh, many years ago for his retirement. He's also very special to this particular parish because it was here on the 29th of November 2003 that he was the cardinal who consecrated this cathedral. Many of you may have been here. I, I certainly was here. Remember that. And uh, so he was the one who um, anointed the altar and various other parts of the church to um, consecrate it to God all those years ago. So he is also well known for leading one of the uh, Roman dicasteries uh, which uh, looked at interfaith dialogue and ecumenism and is very well known across many faiths and Christian traditions for his great work in that area. So let's remember Cardinal Edward uh, Cassidy in our prayers today. Interesting too, just one last thing, he was actually in the same class as Cardinal Edward Clancy, so don't mix the two up. Cardinal Clancy died back in 2014. Cardinal Edward Cassidy is in the same year, and uh, we give thanks to God for his service to the church and ask that he may rest in peace. So, dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people's prayers, and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redeem redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the field fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord.
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of Apostles. The whole group of believers was united, heart and soul, no one claimed for his own use anything that he had, as everything they owned was held in common. The apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus with great power, and they were all given great respect. None of their members were ever in want, as all those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money from them to present it to the apostles. It was then distributed to any members who might be in need. The word of the Lord. to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. Let 
let the sons of Israel say, His love has no end. Let the sons of Aaron say, His love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love has no end. He dies to the The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. He Salvation, O Lord, grant success. Blessed in the name of the Lord is he who comes. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord God is our light. He thanks to the first letter of St. John. Whoever believes that Jesus is Christ has been begotten by God, and whoever loves the Father that begot him loves the child whom he begets. We can be sure that we love God's children if we love God himself and do what he has commanded us. This is what loving God is and keeping his commandments because his commandments are not difficult, because anyone who has been begotten by God has already overcome the world. This is a victory over the world, our faith. Who can overcome the world? Only the man who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus Christ, who came by water and blood, not with water only, but with water and blood, with the Spirit as another witness, since the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas, called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, we have seen the Lord, he answered, unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands and can put my finger in the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas this time was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas, put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, my Lord, and my God. Jesus said to him, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There are many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We all think that we know Thomas, the doubter, from today's narrative. As we always do very well as human beings, we have labeled him and put him in a pigeon box, which is very hard to get out him from. However, I would like today to give you a different picture of Thomas. Who was the real Thomas? And what does the story of Thomas tell us about ourselves? There is a good chance that Thomas was a twin John tells us that Thomas was known as Didymus, the Greek word for twin. Interesting, Thomas also means twin in Aramaic, the common language throughout first century Palestine. Although all the Gospels mention Thomas, it is only the Gospel of John, the one that we've just read from, that records any of Thomas's words. Church tradition tells us that Thomas was a missionary who ended up in India, where he was martyred and buried in Malepo. He was declared the Apostles of India by Pope Paul VI in 1972. Thomas speaks three times in the Gospel of John. First, when Jesus told the disciples that he was heading back to Judea to see Lazarus, the disciples fearfully reminded him that the Jews there had just tried to stone him. It's Thomas who speaks up, let us also go that we may die with him. After a comment like that, you'd think that we'd remember him as Thomas the Brave, 
and not as Thomas the Doubter. Thomas's moment of bravery didn't entirely define him, and neither should his moment of doubt. The second time we see him is when at one point Jesus tells the apostles, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way, the place where I am going? Naturally, the disciples do not necessarily understood what, he's, what Jesus was talking about. And it's Thomas that asked him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Even though it's obvious that Thomas is missing the, the greater point that Jesus is making, our Lord does not get frustrated about it. In fact, because of Thomas's question, Jesus says one of the most profound things written in John's Gospel. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do not know him and have seen him. The third time we hear about Thomas is in today's Gospel. A week after Thomas expresses his uncertainties, Jesus appears to the, to the disciples again, and this time Thomas is among them. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. It's probably important to recognize the gentleness that Jesus expressed here. He does not chastise Thomas for his lack of faith. Instead, he addresses Thomas in a way that allows him to believe. In an instance, Thomas goes from a skeptic, partial believer, or a doubter, to a believer that recognizes the risen Lord. And most of them, most of all, he proclaims the most profound statement in the whole gospel, my Lord and my God. Thomas recognizes that Jesus is God, a personal God with a personal relationship. He is my God. With a curriculum vitae or resume like that, Thomas is much more than a doubter. It is also very likely that the reason why the writer of the Gospel of John nicknamed Thomas the twin is because we see Thomas in us. If that is the case, I do not mind being the comp in the company of Thomas and be called his twin. We also see Thomas in us and in our behavior. Thomas was the theologian per ex excellence. He was the one who asked questions to understand who God is. This is the classic definition of theology, faith seeking understanding, a definition introduced by St. Elsim of Canterbury among a theologian and Archbishop of Canterbury. It means that faith in God revealed in Jesus Christ prompts a question, a search for a deeper understanding. St. Augustine put it this way, believe that you may understand. Augustine believed that knowledge of God comes before faith in him, but faith in God brings with it a constant desire for deeper understanding. The phrase, to phrase it simply, Christian earnestly wants to understand what they believe. Pope John Paul II, in his encyclical letter to the bishops and the church on the relationship between faith and reason, in Latin, fide et ratio, faith and reason, he, he writes, faith and reason are like two wings on which the human spirit rises to the contemplation of truth. There is thus no reason for competition of any kind between reason and faith. 
Each contains the other, and each has its own scope for action. My dear friends, the lesson here is that we should not be ashamed of our questions. Asking for clarification can lead to new insights and breakthroughs. Doubt is part of faith. Doubt does not equate to unbelief. Faith does not imply total clarity, nor does it imply total blindness. Faith is, seeking, is seeing a different way, viewing reality from the divine perspective. When the priest in few moments time elevates the consecrated host during this Eucharist, let us utter our belief in the real presence of Christ in saying in our hearts, my Lord and my God, as Thomas did. together now proclaim our belief. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In this Easter season, our hearts are full of gladness and hope. With confidence, we entrust to God our prayers and petitions for the church that through the gift of the spirit we recognize god's presence with us and profess with thomas my lord and my god lord hear us lord hear our prayer for a renewal of our faith communities that like the early church we may see the needs of others as our needs and open our hearts and resources to assist them Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the newly baptized, that their faith may continue to grow and that they may generously offer loving service to those in need. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For confessors, spiritual directors, and all ministers of reconciliation, that the Holy Spirit will give them wisdom and insight to help others recognize to the length and breadth of God's love and mercy. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for healing, that the Spirit will renew the gift of life in all who are sick, discouraged, struggling with addictions, or weakness that comes with aging. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Bishop Cassidy, Cardinal Cassidy, that the risen Lord will welcome him and all those who have died to eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. God of life, hear these prayers of intercession. Let your mercy flow in abundance upon all who are in need. We make our prayers through Christ the risen Lord. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of the Lord, the of the Holy Church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord but on this day, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord 
Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment light and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Thank you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have a couple of short announcements, uh, just very briefly. One is about, uh, as mentioned in the bulletin, one is about home visits. So if you know someone who wishes to have a member of the clergy or one of our pastoral team visit them, either for communion or just for a chat, for confession, whatever it might be, uh, please let the office know, um, bearing in mind that the parish covers Parramatta but also covers the suburb of Oatlands. So anyone in those areas, we're more than happy to and have an obligation to visit them to keep them in connection with, uh, with the parish and with God. The other announcement is to uh, please return any Project Compassion boxes you may have at home or envelopes. Drop them in as soon as possible, please, so that we can send off that money to Caritas, who do uh, a wonderful job, of course, uh, in various projects throughout the world. And lastly, uh, in the bulletin this week, I wrote a short piece on page two or three about reception of communion. So if you have a read of that, please, I'll be saying more about that next week in the bulletin. Uh, but please, just if you can take that announcement to heart, please, to ensure that we're very reverent at all times, including during communion, which is when most irreverence seems to happen by the way people receive. So just a general, gentle, friendly reminder about receiving communion in a way which is reverent, please. Uh, so once again, thank you for your presence here today as we end the Easter octave, but only the beginning of the great season of Easter, which goes right through to uh, Pentecost. And I hope that you really truly find this season an uplifting one spiritually and in so many other ways as well. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Bow down for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, Alleluia, Alleluia.